Whoa, stop, stop, stop. We can't use that. It's the new year. We've got a new house, a new sky. I'm even building a new observatory. What we need is a new intro. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and of course, Happy New Year. So at the end of 2022, we moved house and I now have a fantastic new space to do astrophotography from. I have beautiful Bortle 4 skies to use and I really cannot wait to get back to regular imaging, but first I need to build myself a new observatory. It really feels like new astro beginnings for me and I wanted to celebrate with a new intro. Now any of you that follow the channel know that I've played about with moving star fields and I've always wanted to create that in space feel and bring my images to life if I could. But I've always struggled doing that. But while learning some new techniques while watching some YouTube tutorials, I made a new friend, Shivering Cactus aka Graham. He has an absolutely amazing YouTube channel full of amazing effects and tutorials on how you can do the same and it's really worth checking out. I will put links in my description but please do check out his videos as they are really good. So after helping me out with a problem that I couldn't get my head around he actually approached me and asked if I'd like to do a collaboration of course, I jumped at the chance. He's really talented with After Effects and I felt that we could do something good together. I actually think the new effects he's applied to my heart nebula in my new intro are just the best. They're absolutely amazing and I think he's done a, a fantastic job and I hope you like it too. I also want to mention my good friend Dan Shapiro who's a talented musician in his own right uh, but uh, I was actually looking to possibly change the music on my intro, but Dan said, oh, it's good music, it just doesn't quite fit with the scene. So what he said was, we'll rework it. And I think he's done a fantastic job also. So he's made it more spacey, more atmospheric, and I think it fits the graphics that Graham has come up with brilliantly. So as I said earlier, I will be putting links in my description to both uh, Graham and Dan's YouTube channels, please visit their channels, uh, give them a like and a subscribe, show them some YouTube love as I know they'd really appreciate it. Okay, now I'm going to show you uh, Shivering Cactus's uh, tutorial on how he's made the, my images into 3D and then animated them so that if you want to do something similar you can. Please enjoy the video and don't forget to check out his channel as he has loads of other videos, especially space related, which are really cool to watch. Enjoy. Hey and welcome to Making Space. This episode is a collaboration with Astrobloke, or does YouTube now make me have to say at Astrobloke? He's an amateur astrophotographer sharing his experiences and knowledge. The dude has a retractable roof for his telescope. 
Astro Bloke's channel is packed with tips and advice for making your own space photography, as well as some amazing images. We got talking when one of my older tutorials didn't quite work out so well in the updated After Effects, and from that chat, I ended up putting together the sequence you saw at the start. All three images are from Astro Bloke's gallery. He told me the Heart Nebula alone represents 150 hours of photography. If you want to learn more about astrophotography, the kit you need, and what you can do with even the simplest setup, head over to Astro Bloke's channel. What I'm going to do in this two-part video is show you how to take three nebula pictures, convert them to semi-3D in three different methods, I'll then arrange them in 3D space, and create a camera to fly from one to the other. Let's jump into After Effects. Here I am in AE, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a standard HD comp. So I'll go to Composition, New Composition. I'm using After Effects 2023, and they've just added some new composition presets. I can of course set my own parameters, but the new social media options suit me fine. Social Media Landscape HD, which gives me a width of 1920 and a height of 1080, and a frame rate of 30 frames per second. I could change any of these, but even if I was intending to render to show on a TV, I'd probably stick with 30 FPS these days. I'd only use the different frame rates if I was preparing a video for broadcast. I'm setting the duration to be less than a minute, but as you saw in the intro, that's quite fast. You can also change this at any time. Next, it's time to import Astroblokes Nebula pictures. But astrophotography tends to make massive images. Great for print and for academic study, but for a video like this, we'll never get that close. So I resize the images in Photoshop first. If you don't have Photoshop, your After Effects license includes access to Adobe Express, which is a web tool that includes image resizing. If you don't resize, AE might struggle when animating, but I did want full screen, so I dropped the size down to 3000 pixels wide for each nebula. I also use Photoshop to cut out the bubble nebula and then use Content Aware Fill to remove it from the background. This step came in handy later, allowing me a greater camera range of movement, but it's not 100% necessary. Drag your image into the comp. Okay, next let's make this a 3D layer, which is really a 2D layer in 3D space. Click on the 3D checkbox. If you can't see it, check the toggle switches and modes button. And if I now change the view to two views, you can see the top down view and we have our flat image. Now let's make a camera. Go to layer, new, camera. A two node camera means that we can control where the camera is looking at by means of 3D coordinates rather than by rotation. And from the top view, you can now see a camera. Rolling back the mouse wheel zooms out the comp view so you can see in the second panel what the camera is seeing. Using these controls in the toolbar, watch what happens when I move the camera back in 3D space. And if I expand the camera's transform properties in the timeline, you can see what's going on. If I select the image and hit P, I can see the nebula's position properties. And so the camera's point of interest is at the same coordinates as the nebula. Which is great for now. I like to link the point of interest to a separate layer though, as it makes it easier to see what's happening and animate changes. So go to Layer, New, Null Object. Hit Enter and rename this to Camera Null. Make it 3D and hit P to expose its position properties. Then, using the Point of Interest Pick Whip, link it to the Null's position. There, now we have control over where the camera is looking. As you can see though, the nebula cuts off at the edges of the image, so we're going to need some artistic license. Switch back to one view for the moment, and then double click on the nebula layer in the timeline. Now, select the mask tool, and draw a mask, clicking and dragging each point. I'm excluding the fainter areas. When you're done, select the layer on the timeline and tap MM to expose the mask properties and set the feather to be around 200 pixels, but drop the mask expansion down to about minus 100. If I close the layer view now, you'll see we've cut out the nebula and softened the edges. 
though it's lost a lot of material. So next, making sure the image layer is selected, go to Edit, Duplicate. And on the bottom layer, collapse the properties and then expand them again and expand the transform properties. Crank up the scale to at least 170% and set the Z rotation to 180. I'm going to create a fake outer edge by using blurs and distortions, but first we need to hide the stars as they will give the game away. With the bottom layer still selected, go to Effect, Keying, Extract, and drop the white point down to 60, and set the white feather to 2. This removes the brightest areas. Next, go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, CC Radial Blur. Set the type to Fading Zoom in the amount to 24. Go back to Blur and Sharpen, and add a CC Vector Blur effect, and set the amount to 100. I'm trying to disguise the origin of this outer nebula. Finally for this layer, go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Turbulent Noise. This initially hides everything but the shape, but now, Go to the Effects Transfer mode and select Overlay. In Transform, drop the scale to 70, expand Subsettings and up the Influence to 100. Now, expand the Layers Transform properties again. Use the Layers Parenting Pick Whip to link it to the version above so any position changes we will make will move both layers. See how the position values are now different as they are based on the other's layer. And on the position Z value, just push the layer back a little, to around 2000 pixels. This stops the two layers being in the exact same space and prevents flickering, but then scale it up so we can see it again. Finally for this layer, Drop the opacity to 60%, so we're focused on the actual nebula. Now let's animate the camera. Select the camera layer and hit P to expose the position, and use the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Then scrub along the timeline to about 5 seconds, and use the same dolly tool as earlier to move the camera in. Click and drag a box to select both keyframes, and then right click and choose Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease. This will have the camera accelerate and decelerate. It's a simple method and plenty of people choose to set their own speeds using the speed graph tool, but I think this will work for us. Now, let's re-add the bubble nebula. Drag the cutout into the comp, drop it to the bottom of the timeline and turn it off. Next, go to Layer, New, Solid. Make a comp size solid and click OK. If you don't have Video Copilot's free Orb plugin, pause this video and go install that. Link is in the description. Everyone else, double tap on the right side of the screen to skip ahead. Effect, Video Copilot, VC Orb. In Map, set the Diffuse and Illumination layers to the cutout image. You may have noticed with the cutout, I don't have it fill the space. The empty space will wrap around the back of the sphere. Increase the amount to 400, and drop the glossiness and specular to zero. And set the illumination to one. Expand advanced options and set the edge feather to one. By taking advantage of the bubble nebula's shape and orb's 3D responsiveness to create a 3D bubble. Which I can see if I use the orbit around tool. Scrub ahead in the timeline to about 10 seconds and move the camera using the orbit tool. and a quick preview of what we have so far. And it's not bad, but we can do better. But before we do that, you know I've got to ask for a like and a subscription. And what would really help with the tubes algorithm is if you commented below. Go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Make sure it's above all the images and the orb layer, and then go to Effect, Distort, Optics Compensation. Check the Reverse Lens Distortion checkbox and then set the amount to 60. Looking at what we have, let's move the images 
back in Z space a little, so they're further away from the bubble. And let's also distract the audience with a camera spin. Expand the camera's transform properties, and at 5 seconds, set a keyframe for the Z rotation. Then scrub back to 0, and set a new keyframe to 90. And let's also adjust the lower nebula's rotation, so it's about 90 degrees and filling the frame. There's lots more dressing up to do, the first being we can add some 3D stars. I've got a preset for this, but if you're new to my channel, pause this video and go watch it now. It's linked in the description. Everyone else, skip ahead. And double click to add... No, you've gone too far, jump back. With your new solid selected... Okay, close enough, I've just made a new solid and called it stars. Then go to the effects and presets panel, and search for 3D stars. Double click to add it to the stars layer. Solo this for a moment and see what's happening. Sweet! And unsoloing this... Even better! Okay, we're 15 pages in, and there's two more 3D styles to look at. So I'm going to add in one last feature here, and then I'll pick this up in my next video. Create a new black solid. Make sure that it's above everything else, and then I used Video Copilot's optical flares. But if you don't have the Pay4 plugin, go to Effect, Generate, Lens Flare. Up the brightness to 150, and set the Layers Transfer Mode to Add. And then go to Effect, Color Correction, Tritone. And then use the Midtones Eyedropper to select a pinkish red from the nebula and set a keyframe for the center to be off screen. And move ahead to the camera's next keyframe, and move the flare as if it's a 3D light source. So I'm setting this one to the bottom. This is adding a light leak style effect, that adds a stylized look. By adding this sort of effect, along with the 3D stars and the optical compensation, we provide lots of distraction, so the audience doesn't pick up as quickly that these are 2D images. Last thing before we go, select the middle keyframe on the camera, right click and choose Keyframe Interpretation, and set it to Auto Bezier, which just softens the animation. And that's it for animating a single astrophotography photo. Next time I'll cover two different techniques, and link them all in this same 3D space. Astrobloke has also shared these images for your use. The Crescent Nebula is linked in the description below, and the full project file will be on the other video. Well, what a great video and so much information. I uh, think you might have heard mentioned in that video that there is a follow-up video. So Graham has actually put together quite a few different techniques of how to do the 3D manipulation. But he felt that one video was too long, so there's going to be a second one. And what I'll do is I'll relaunch a video and introduce that to you as well. So if you enjoyed the content, please consider liking and subscribing to me. And if you want to support the channel further, please click the join button. Until next time, I hope you all keep well. Happy New Year and clear skies.